Hello, welcome. Take a moment, read this problem, and then press play and we'll solve it together. So, this is a candidate for political office commissioned a poll. His staff received responses from 900 likely voters. That's our population that we're dealing with. And 55% of them said they would vote for the candidate. The staff then conducted a simulation of 1,000 more polls of 900 voters, assuming that 55% of the voters would vote for the candidate. The output of the simulation is shown here below. We've got our frequency and our proportions. Given this output and assuming a 95% confidence level, the margin of error for the poll is closest to which of the following? All right, so notice that they'll, they'll do this sometimes. They'll ask you for the margin of error. Now in this video, we're not getting into where this comes from, but the, the formula you need to know for, for margin of error is that the margin of error, call it mo, equals your z-score, right, z-score, times the square root of p times one minus p over n, and what p is, that represents the mean of your sample proportion. So that's the 55% here, and it's gonna be as a decimal. So we'll start writing this out. So it's 0 0.55. This is a binomial situation. You're either going to vote for the candidate or not. So it's one or the other. So the other case is one minus p. If you vote for them, it's a 55% chance that you will. So there's a one minus 55% or 0.45, right? Uh, chance that you will not vote for them, and you're dividing that by the number of cases, which is 900, right? That's the size, the sample size of each of the experiments. So taking the square root of that and then multiplying it by the z-score. Now they give you a 95% confidence level, and the given z-score for that is um, 1.96, and then you just calculate this, and you'll see in a moment we'll get 0.03. But let me just say that there are a few z-scores that you should know. So for, um, for given confidence intervals, so the z-scores for given confidence levels. And this goes back to the way um, a standard curve works. Let me see if I can pull up an image here. Okay, let me just clear this off so you can see what I mean. So here in a normal curve, uh, if you're within one standard deviation of the mean, that encompasses about 68% of your data. Then if you're within about two standard deviations, that's 68% plus uh, essentially 27 or 95% of your data right here. This is 95% of your data. This your, these are your confidence intervals. And then here, if you add this together, you get about 99% of your data within three standard deviations. And what a z-score is, it is your distance essentially from the, the mean. It's the number of deviations you are away from the mean. So you're calculating with a z-score, how many standard deviations am I from the mean? So if, if the z-score was one, you'd have, your confidence interval would be about 68%. And this is about 95%. So it's about two uh, standard deviations from the mean to get a 95% interval, which is why the z-score that's associated with 95% is about two. It's 1.96 exactly to get, well, not exactly, but that's an approximation, it's an acceptable approximation. And then for 99%, it's about actually more like 2.58 for a z-score. That gets you about 99%. Now, here, if you add, this is um, three standard deviations actually here, right? And here, sorry, that's a little off. So that would get you 2.1% plus 68.2% plus 13.6% times two plus another 2.1%. So really, I mean, that, that approximation right there, let's just add that up real quick. You get 2.1 times two. I'm showing you this is an approximation plus 34.1 times two plus 13.6 divided by two. These are the areas under the curve. Hit enter, you really get about 99.6%. So, and that's three standard deviations. So a z-score of three would give you a confidence interval of over 99%. So when we say the confidence interval is lower than that, lower than 99.6, but 99, it makes sense that your z-score, which is the number of standard deviations, is actually less than three. It's about 2.58. So if you just go back real quick here, the z-scores that we want to know are describing the confidence interval um, 
is, is associated with different confidence intervals, and those z-scores are describing the number of standard deviations from the mean. So if your z-score is 1, your confidence interval will be about 68%. About, right? That's an approximation. Now, I haven't looked at enough problems yet on the regions, but I'm pretty sure. So if, if you know that 1.96 gives you, let me put this down here, 1.96 gives you a z-score, uh, sorry, the z-score of 1.96 is associated with a confidence interval of 95%. That's definitely going to solve the problem, but also if you, I think if you use 2, you can also get a, a, a good result, and I'm not sure. We'll test it in this problem, but I think 2 is close enough. But let's say 1.96 should be safe. The other one that might pop up is 90%. In that case, it's 1.65 uh, about. And then 99% is higher, it's over two and a half, it's about 2.58. So I, I believe these numbers right here you have to know, and the way I remember them is I picture that, that bell curve, and I say, all right, well, I know that one standard deviation is a z-score of one, that's about 68% confidence interval, and here, uh, confidence level of 95%, I think, is pretty close to two, a little bit under, so about 1.96. 99% is more than 2.5 for a z-score, more than 2.5 standard deviations away from the mean. And 90%, that's the harder one for me to remember, it's 1.65, so it's, it's closer to 1.5 standard deviations. Now, that, aside from that, let's go back here. Let's figure out this problem. So, and make sure it's actually 0.03. So we get 1.96 times the square root of 0.55 times 0.45 divided by 900. And then you see get about 0.03. But let's go back, let's say, I'm trying to figure out if two is acceptable, and I'll test this every time I come across it. Can we approximate uh, these z-scores for the confidence intervals? And I'll go back to that list in a moment. But delete that, let me go here. Delete, 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 and put two. Let's see if this gives us a good approximation. So 0.033, it's giving us a good approximation. So my question is, going back here, instead of remembering 1.65, 1 1.96, 1 and 2.5, 8, I'm hoping it's good enough to know 1.6 or 1.5 even, 2, and then 2.5 or 2.6. So we'll check back on that, but these are the three you should know, and it's really based on that bell curve there, the normal curve. All right, thank you.